Good afternoon, Michael. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining with your team. Hey, Phil. Thanks for having us. I'm uh, yeah. Michael Freer. I'm a BIM manager with Pope Architects. Um, I've got uh, Zach and Chris uh, with us, and we're super excited about this at least neon uh, in Enscape, <laughs> if not a whole lot of more applications. This could, this could be some really cool stuff. Great. Tell me what kind of projects you guys work on. What do you do? Oh, uh, a lot of uh, housing, commercial, uh, in, uh, commercial TIs, uh, general interior design, medical projects. Uh, we're not every market segment, but we cover a whole lot of them from uh, elementary school through senior housing and uh, simple office remodels, yeah. everything in between. All right. One more question. What do you like about Enscape? That it generally just works. Um, <laughs> that I don't I don't need to fight with it. Aside from the fact that I, I have to update my graphics uh, drivers on a regular basis. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, it it has it just brings down the entry barrier for folks getting into rendering. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's it's it makes it it's a it's the easy button. It is. Uh, easy. For, oh, that's right. For it rendering. should be a start button. It should say easy button. That's a good one. I like it. All right, well, good. I'm excited about this. Uh, I was sitting at the kitchen area on Saturday and was looking up at the Christmas tree and thought, gosh, I bet if you could just make those lights blink, it would be really cool. Oh, I bet you could do that in Enscape. So I had a bit of a play on Sunday and I was like, oh, this works. It's kind of silly, but it works and it looks nice. Uh, so I've actually, this is the prep file and I've got some other files open in the background. So you'll be able to see this in a moment. I'll give you guys the final result and then we'll kind of unpeel it and then put it back together. All right. And then you guys just stop and ask questions as we go along. We'll be about 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to turn the lights down and we'll see the end result. Okay. So there's obviously some animated uh, textures in terms of movies here. There's also some animated solid colors. And if you, if you start on the right-hand side and look at the open in 24 hour sign, let's look at a cycle here. And here's the beginning. So it's flashing back and forth, open hours, top, bottom. And then on the other side, it's saying 24. And they kind of work alternate, 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 and then together, flash, 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 right? So there's, there's kind of a pattern to this. And then if we go to the uh, year sign, let me go up a little bit and change that time of day. You'll notice there's light bulbs around the outside and they're alternating and you can actually play this mental trick with yourself where you can't really tell if they're moving to the left or right and as i was playing with that i realized it doesn't matter you don't have to animate the direction it's just what your mind does the way they alternate if you stare at it a certain way you'll say oh it's alter it's, it's actually running clockwise and then if you wait for a bit you go oh no it's actually going counterclockwise it's just what your mind tends to do so those bulbs are just alternating, flashing on and off. And then, you, and then there's a cycle to the, to the year part of it. So this is kind of in the middle of the cycle. When it gets to the end, everything flashes. Then it's going to go dark, two, zero, two, zero. It's going to repeat. And then two, zero, two, zero this way, like 2022. 20, and then it flashes and then it starts again off, two, zero, two, two. It's 20, 22, 20. 22, and then everything flashes together and then it cycles. So here's what's happening in the background. These are solid textures created in a, in a um, uh, animation editing tool called Camtasia. You can edit sound and video. I like it, it's really simple. It's, it just does what it does, it's fantastic. So in order to set this up so that the cycles would happen in sequence and kind of in conjunction with each other, I created a bunch of separate tracks. These first two tracks are for the alternating bulbs, right? The ones around the sign. And then the next four tracks are for the numbers 2022. Two, two. And then the final two tracks are for that, the sign that we looked at first. It says open 24 hours. So I set all of this up, kind of got the sequence where I wanted it. And then you can see what's happening with, you know, sort of each letter or each number, each word. And then you just, hide all of the tracks that you don't want. So I'm just going to hide all of these tracks except for the, the first number two. So that's the only track that's shown. And then here's what would happen if you played it. It's off and then it's on and it stays on while the other lights come on. And then it stays on 
and then it turns off and then it stays on and then it turns off and then it off on off on it flashes and then the cycle starts over these solid colors if i just select one of the lines down here at the bottom and one of the panels that's just a solid color shape that's been stretched to the edges of the canvas and if we look at the properties of this color we can see that its opacity is 100 percent i just took that value copied it right on top of itself and then changed the opacity let's select this one to 25 percent so the visual effect of having a darker color looks like it's not lit so that it's lit and not lit goes back and forth and then when you start to, if you, when you decide how long you want these tracks, as you start to stretch them or add them, you see at the bottom, it says start time and then it says duration. So right now the duration is four seconds long. The duration of, let me turn on these other tracks quickly. The duration of that one is, let me start to stretch it. That's three seconds long. It's probably two and one. So basically they look off when they're, opacity is set to 25%. When you set the opacity to 100%, like this one on the top, yeah, it just looks like it's on. So what we do is you export each of these channels individually. You turn all the other ones off that you don't want. You do an export for an MP4 file. You put it in your materials folder, and then you map it to the component Revit that you want and give it self-elimination. So I'm going to jump over to the Revit file. So could and, you do yeah. a transition of a slow fade in by just going yeah. 5%, 10%, 20%, 15% and ramping uh, up? You could just, or I think you could have a solid color and you could add a fade to it. Like those are just transitions. So oh, if so we selected just... a transition and just said, I just want to fade. I should know where this is quickly, but I know. I'm OK, so like here's a fade. If you just take this and drop it, it's just going to create a fade. And you don't have to do fades between tracks. You could just fade up. So right. instead of it being, um, let me turn off these other tracks so they're not visible. So right now, it's kind of coming up. It's not an abrupt. <laughs> yeah, so you could just add. Cool. Yeah, you could just add those fades between them. That's why I like Camtasia. You can sometimes I, I I have separate tracks, and in order to do a crossfade, I'll overlap the tracks and then just do a transition where the top track just slowly dissolves. Other times, you do a transition or between two scenes by actually putting the same putting the two different scenes on one timeline and just doing a crossfade between it. And, and Camtasia figures it out. So you can kind of time them and stuff is really easy. So yeah, you could actually fade up. You don't have to do an abrupt shift, but this kind of technique, you could do crossing signs, right? Where you have, you count down, no, no, you know, three, it says walk, walk, walk. And then it says, don't walk three, two, one, don't walk. And then it says walk. And then it goes back. It's just whatever animated solid color or animated texture you want. So we take this and we go to Revit and you can add the texture in one, in one of two ways. I'm going to select the sign, uh, go into its type properties so we can see that we've actually got type parameters for each of these colors. And if we look at the first number, number one, and then go into the material properties, this is one way to get to the material. Uh, it's got, from the appearance tab, it actually has a solid color assigned, but it also has self-illumination and it has a luminance value. The animation can be assigned in the Revit material editor, and it's a little cryptic by using the appropriate um, path to the MP4 file here. You have to put it in the description value. That's one way. The other way is just to go into the Enscape uh, material, not library, material editor. And we'll just do a keyword search for neon purple and you see here that it's got a color value but it's also got a texture assigned to it the color value is just that if you take away the animated texture it just has a solid color that's on if you give it a texture that's an, an animated texture it kind of overrides the color so i like having both sometimes if you just want to turn off the noise so if we select the video path or actually let me back out for a second and i'm going to select the folder 
that says, okay, well, where are you? So instead of having to create the whole discrete or the whole absolute path, um, you can just find it here. And you can actually filter by different file types. So if you don't want an image, you want a video texture and then it'll just isolate them. So it's just a solid texture. And then you map that to the geometry and the result is even in a, a completely lit space, if I turn the sun back up, you can kind of see what's happening. And then if you turn the sun down, right, change the time of day, it's going to go into a... Now, this technique is used for really trivial stuff, but I think it adds some nice realism. Uh, inside of this component, I've remapped the image texture to the opening sequence to an old arcade game. So inside the cabin, it's just doing what it would normally do. Um, obviously, things like TV screens, you know, if you need a nice something going on inside of, a, inside of your design. I think, you know, urban settings where you need crosswalk, walk, you need street lights to go from red to green to orange back to red. On some, on some sequence, it just loops. And then the only other thing that I've done here is you'll notice that I'm not, move, I'm not moving the mouse and the animations are still playing. That is a setting in Revit under the general settings for Enscape. There's an option for rest mode. If you, by default, it's checked, which means when you stop moving, everything freezes. It looks a little unnatural. If you uncheck that option, two things will happen. Uh, the first one is the fan on your computer will kick on because <laughs> your graphic card warm enough to heat coffee. And then the second thing is when I go back to Enscape right now, it's not moving because it's not sort of the present thing on the screen, which is kind of nice. I think it's saving processing cycles. At the moment we start to move it, it's going to go back into this um, kind of play mode or rest mode is deactivated and that's it that's how we do it how processor intensive is that compared to everything else i, I don't think it's processor intensive i think it's gpu intensive this laptop well, yeah, is, yeah sure gpu intensive yeah this laptop's from 2018 um it's got a 2080 rtx graphic card i think it's a pretty good minimum the 3080s are out now and uh, it doesn't, I mean, if, if you're not plugged in, it'll quickly say your battery is going to shut itself down and you know, your computer is going to shut down in 10 minutes. <laughs> so you, you have to have your laptop or your you know, laptop plugged in for this to take effect. But when I save the EXE file from Enscape, it bundles everything together, all of the uh, animated textures and everything. And it didn't seem to be that much larger than the version without the animated textures. Yeah, my workstation didn't seem to blink at all on it, but I was like, I don't know if, you know, workstation graphics is a whole lot different than desktop graphic or than laptop yeah. graphics. And I'm like, I don't, yeah. mm, I don't, <laughs> my workstation is not a good measure of, is this a, uh, is this a demanding task or not? <laughs> yeah. I've noticed that it seems to take slightly longer to open. And I think that's because okay. it's opening the movie files as opposed to just a solid, you know, sort of regular texture. But then once it's open, I mean, I don't, it's not like I get any flickering or anything. You move around and everything still seems to be happening. It, I've got my visual settings set to ultra for the live view. It's fine. And is the, the glow around it is not actually changing. It's not actually changing the, it's not you acting the, like a the light. The glow back here? Yeah. You know, I think that's an artifact inside of Revit um, because I've actually got light objects inside of the bulbs. And so if we actually open the sign, you would see there is a, you know, the bulb has a wire in it and the wire has illumination. The bulb itself has illumination of material. But then if we, if we just look at it as a light, the lights have light sources inside of them. And so I think what's happening is the light source is kind of extending beyond the geometry. It's going in every direction. So it's illuminating a wall even though it should be blocked. Okay. So I, I suspect if we change that to change the, um, the sort of sphere, the influence of that light so that the light loss factor, uh, there's one setting in here. I don't think it has to do with the radius size. I think that's what we're seeing in real, real world here. I think there's some other setting with regard to lights that allows us, oh, illumination at a distance of something. So if we turn yeah. this down, it would, impact it doesn't it doesn't illuminate as far 
So could we use this trick to dim a frosted light bulb to use the Revit, like to use an IES file inside of a, a light fixture and to block light? Oh yeah. You could, yeah, if you give the light bulb, if you use a frosted light bulb and it's too opaque, the light can't get out. Right, so can we set the dark mode to be a very pale gray with a low, and then the light mode to be effectively translucent with the... It is, but... I think that's really computationally heavy. I know if you put a light source inside of it and the opacity of the bulb is too low so that light in the real world couldn't get out, right. you can't see the light source. It's like having a light source up inside a ceiling cavity. Right. Yep. But uh, turning it down doesn't seem to always have a proportional effect. It's like okay. to determine how much light comes out. I get your point. Yeah. I think that stuff like glass and translucency is computationally really heavy. I don't know if we have numbers for that yet. <laughs> so there you go. So that's how it works. That's I, know really kind cool. of, I know it's kind of silly, but uh, you know, if it makes the client happy, I'm all for it. <laughs> there we go. Any other questions? Could be, could be about something else and we'll cover it now. Chris, what do you think? You see uh, applications for that in the the near term? Um, I can. I don't get a lot of requests for videos in that case, but I I like the glowing. The blinking is just cool. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like yeah, moths to a flame. It's like oh, what's that thing going? Yeah. I think re retail signage, uh, directional signage, uh, street signage, things like that. It's all part of a, you know, it's part of making your customer have a good experience, understand the, mm -hmm. understand the uh, emotional impact of the design. So. Yeah, and I wish we could have gotten a couple of uh, other of our users on. I know uh, one's one's out for the holidays, and mm -hmm. uh, another one has a a project issuing today, and is a little bit swamped. That's all right, Michael. Thank you very much, Christopher. Thank you very oh, my much. My pleasure. This is yep. great. Hope you guys have a wonderful holiday, and please reach out. Likewise. Anytime. Take care, buddy.